Welcome everybody to the delayed version of the critique show starring me and Ed and Bill and everyone else. Very accurate. <laughs> um, so I guess before, do we want to do it before we get started? I, I would think so. Okay. Okay. So we'll do a quick, pres uh, Gary's going to do a quick presentation yeah. on the uh, Albuquerque balloon trip. Yeah. Um, not to be confused with the Chinese balloon that just took a trip to a country. Um, <laughs> Although so, they've been having fun, I tell you, the balloons yeah. I've seen have been fun. Well, we promise not to shoot you down. Yeah, don't shoot me down. No. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, the Albuquerque, they, they took pictures of balloon, whereas the Chinese balloon took pictures of us. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. They were dropping manual. I'm, I'm going to stand there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, make that baby full screen. That's what they were doing. Chinese men don't move here. You can stand over here. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. So let me um, share my screen. Yep. Zoom, right? Go and slideshow. You can also see what the Zoom is like. Okay. And y'all can still hear me, right? You have to wave. You have to wave. Okay. I just want to say something. Pardon? I'd like him to say something. I'd like him to speak. That would be uh, probably... Yeah, William said something. So yeah, we can hear him. So okay. okay. I can hear him. I'm going to pretend. Hello, everybody. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started, I guess. Um, the first thing we're going to do is today, uh, I'm going to move around, Ed. I'm sorry. That's the way I operate. Um, so work with me. And I'm going to also use my conference call voice to make sure everybody can hear me, especially on the microphone. Um, so last is two weeks ago, right? The two weeks ago, um, after the photo walk that we all had, the, the those who attended all had fun. Yeah, we were talking about uh, various things, and one of the things that came up was the Albuquerque, Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. So uh, there seemed to be a great deal of interest at the table in the restaurant at the time. So I said, let me put together a presentation, and kind of talk about it, and uh, throw this out for people to see if there's any interest in maybe a group outing for it. So my goal here is to kind of walk through at a very quick, high level what's involved. And there's a lot of information here, all right? I'm gonna throw a lot at you. You're not expected to remember. We're gonna make this, the presentation available so you can go through. And I'm gonna start extending that into a larger document as we fill in information as I get more things in place. There are some critical elements that I'll get to at the end so that you understand what's required if you want to participate. But I want to talk, kind of talk up the event, first of all. So um, first of all, Fiesta runs the first full week in October every year, okay? This year is number 51, and it will go from October 7th to October 15th. That's a Saturday through a following Sunday, all right? Um, it will happen again next year. I don't have the dates off the top of my head, but it will happen again next year and the year after that. So obviously it's been going on a while. I have been fortunate. I grew up in Albuquerque and I've been going back and visiting for a while. I've been fortunate to go to quite a few of them. Great, great event, very photographic. They say it's the most photographic, photographed event in the world. And when you walk around on the field and you see the people with cameras, you're gonna believe it, okay? Because everybody's got a camera in their hand of some kind, okay? So what happens? Well, there's a lot of things that happen here at the Fiesta proper. You're going to get the lift off of the balloons. You're going to get competitions during the weekdays, all right? You're going to have festival food, overpriced greasy food, woohoo, but there's burritos, uh, there's coffee, there's all kinds of good stuff, there's beer, I'm sure. In the evening, there are things called glows, right? And sometimes the glows are the regular balloons, sometimes it's a special shapes. And when you see the balloons with the fire inside them lit up in the dark, you get a completely different experience than you would get during the daytime when you're getting off the ground and flying through the sky. Uh, they don't fly at night, okay? Uh, there is fireworks after that pretty much every evening. So if you want to practice your fireworks skills, you stick around and you prepare for that too, because they tell you exactly where they're going to be and you can set up and enjoy. So all kinds of cool stuff there. All right. And they also do things during the middle of the day. So it's not always uh, uh, about the balloons. They do activities as well. They'll get people doing paragliding and doing stuff with smoke and making things. Mm -hmm. like that. So you can lots of 
I guess to take off on birds in flight if you wanted to. Uh, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Okay. Uh, the Fiesta, the balloonfiesta.com website is where you want to go to see all the information. They have a countdown page on there. Okay, let's move on. All right. So I'm going to talk about this. So this is what happens in the morning. First thing in the morning is you get the dawn patrol at 6 a.m. And they will take off lit up so you get something something in the morning with with it with anywhere from eight to twelve balloons they go up they're taking out the wind and finding out what the wind does okay on that note it's important to understand that balloons don't fly if the wind is too fast seven to eight miles an hour maximum if the winds on the ground are too fast or the winds aloft are too fast they will not fly okay no money back you get there you're on the ground and you're enjoying the balloons they might stand up if it's not horrible they might not. You never know. Last year, Saturday and Sunday in the first weekend, I think they did not fly. But they do this every morning, though, right? This, yes. but this is this is every morning. Okay. There's a dawn patrol every morning. Okay, so you're you're going to see if the weather is okay. You're going to see this happen. After that, um, go ahead. You walk around. They will do the national anthem. Um, they have the horseback uh, Albuquerque Police Department people doing stuff. So you get some photo ops there, doing things like that. Onward. Um, Go ahead. Um, once the balloons are taking off, you have all kinds of great photographic opportunities with the light coming through the envelope. Lots and lots of translucencies. So you do really cool stuff. Um, also, when they get up higher, all kinds of cool stuff. And this is pretty much what you see. That one's a little oversaturated. Y your screen needs calibration. <laughs> <laughs> Because it looks better, it looks better over here on his laptop. Then that's what it's supposed that's to look like. Yeah, um, yeah, that's calibrated, and and it looks better over there. Okay, but this is more like what you're going to see when you're on the field. All right, lots and lots of people. Right, lots of balloons. They go off in four waves. Okay, they don't come off at once. There are 500 balloons now at the festival. They actually have gone down uh, uh, since years past. They used to allow it for like 700 balloons at a time, all right? But there will be four waves. So you have a set of balloons that will go up. 30 minutes later, another set goes up. 30 minutes later, another set goes up. So this thing lasts a while and you can wander around. Go ahead. And what's fun, I think also is people watching. So you can get to see how people are responding to things, especially the kids. There's lots of kids out there in the morning being drugged. They'll never remember a thing, but it's fun for me. <laughs> because because you want to walk around and take pictures of kids on shoulders, so there's a million of them everywhere. And they're having a great time because there's some there's there's lots to look at, lots of cool stuff. Um, depending on the weather, you might have clear blue skies, maybe the moon will be up. I've had that happen a few years. You might have pretty cloudy skies with the balloons against clouds. So you don't know what you're gonna get. Um, and also the balloons go overhead, so you're doing this and kind of stuff. Lots of great opportunities. So onward. Um you can shoot into the balloons. They love it when you come up. And, the pilots love it when you come up and talk to them. So they will let you look into the balloons. You can shoot the the the, the, blow, the blowers or the the, the um, burners. Burners. Thank you. <laughs> um, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of deal. If you wander around the city, you can find things that will happen in various places. So you can see different scenes as well. So it's not just about being on the field. Sometimes I stay off the field and we chase them. We wander around in the car and chase them, see all, all, all kinds of cool stuff. And like I said, fireworks. So you can have lots of fun practicing that. Um, I think that's probably the last one. Okay. So how does it work? You get it before 30 a.m. Okay. <laughs> Which is great on the first Saturday when you arrive at 6 p.m. Friday. All right. And you're talking to your friends and you stay up until 10 o'clock and then you go to bed and go, 4.30, here we go. And you get up, you get dressed, you get out of the house because at 5 o'clock you want to be at the parking lot. You do not want to be in line to drive to the field in the morning because the lines are really long. So you ride the park and ride, which ticket gets also you into the Fiesta, right? You buy one ticket, you get the, the bus ride, you get into the Fiesta and back again. Very, very convenient, great thing to do, all right? You want to be on the field by six o'clock, see the gun patrol, see what's going on. There's already a bazillion people there. It's very, very crowded. Um, once the dawn patrol goes up and you find out what the plan is, you hear what the, the answer on the loudspeakers, you get the coffee, you walk around for a little while because once the light comes up, usually around seven in October, the first wave will start lifting off. Or you can walk around and see what the pilots are doing to get ready. But lots of the act activity doesn't really start happening until about a quarter to seven. Um, like I said, about every 30 minutes or so, fourth wave takes off. You never know what's going to happen. The waves can go up, and Albuquerque has what's called a box. And that's one of the reasons it's 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 what it's they can do what they do. Because what you can do is the balloon can go up and you can get one airstream this way. You can go up, 
get another one, find another one to go this way and another one to go back over this way. You can go around in a circle over the field, all right? And it means that they're all staying in the same spot. And so all the balloons are kind of clustered together. And so you've got this whole 3D thing happening. If you get there on a day to see that, it's really something. It's really amazing, okay? Sometimes they go up and everybody goes to the south. Sometimes they go up and everybody goes to the north. It's just like, that's what they do, you, but you don't know. It's, it's, there's no, there are no guarantees here. <laughs> it's important to remember this, okay? Um, once the fourth wave is complete, you go get back on the park and ride bus, you get back to your car and you go find food. And then you go back and next page. Oh, park and ride. So sidebar, my plan is to do this path here. There's the field over there. You can see the green thing, right? This is Cottonwood Mall, which is across the river, okay? The goal is to go to Cottonwood Mall, take the park and ride from there because that trip is 10 minutes as opposed to 25 minutes from the heights. There are Airbnbs and VRBOs over here. <laughs> By the other one, there are not. Okay, so this is the plan to go to this one, and it's very quick in and out. All right, so that's, that's kind of good thing. Pardon? RV campgrounds? Um, they have an RV campground. I'll, I'll show you this guy over here. Uh, yeah, this guy right here is an RV campground. It's probably already full. I'll, I'll tell you that, but it's it, they do have RV campgrounds. And there's also some, um, that large spot to the to the right is also an RV campground. They have lots of parking for RVs, okay? Lots of people make this a regular stop on their uh, caravans. So it's a very popular thing for that as well. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of where I'm going with this idea. Uh, let's bring Airbnbs onward, okay? In the afternoon, you can take a nap because <laughs> you didn't get any sleep. Or you can do something else. There are other things to do in town. If you want to go back in the evening to see the glow, then you, about 4.30, you kind of head back to the field because that gets you in before the traffic gets really bad. And you're on the field. There's the lights are coming down. They're putting up the balloons. And you're kind of wandering around and seeing the balloons. And then they're up and they're glowing. And it's all very, very cool. And typically, the fireworks are at 8 o'clock, I believe, is what the website says. So if okay. you're at the park to see the sunset, you're actually shooting over that area that we're we would be staying in uh that is that is correct because it's because, because the um albuquerque you saw the the river the rio grande albuquerque does this it, the land is like this so you're over here at balloon Fiesta park down to the river and then off to what we call the west mesa which travels out about 10 or 10 or 12 miles in that direction so if you're shooting in that direction the sun's going down over there okay so you, so you get beautiful beautiful sunsets preferably with clouds if we're lucky uh, so stuff can happen over there. Sunrise is up behind the mountain. I didn't bring any pictures uh, of sunrise from behind the mountain. Um, but uh, that's not, in my mind, quite as interesting, personally. What is so, typical weather that time of year for Albuquerque? So typically, <clears throat> as perfect as somebody who grew up in New Mexico wants it to be. It's going to be cold in the morning, 50, 55 degrees, maybe 45. It can be chilly. In the afternoon, you're going to get a sunburn because it's going to be 75. Okay, and in the evening when the sun goes down, it gets chilly again. So Albuquerque invented dressing in layers. <laughs> okay, uh, and you can definitely get uh, you can definitely get a sunburn uh, in the middle of the day because it 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 is five times heavy. Okay, but uh, for me, it's dry as a bone. Uh, lip balm and lotion, by the way, just note note that um, I forget lip balm every year and have to buy some. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much perfect weather uh, for the most part. Now. Not to say it isn't sometimes rainy, it isn't sometimes very, very windy, it isn't sometimes, you know, not perfect. Uh, but overall, there's going to be days during the week that are going to be perfect and the balloons will go up uh, more often than not. So last year, I think it was a rarity. Okay. Okay. Onward. Okay. Schedule. Weekends. I, someone didn't invent his PowerPoint. Weekends are mass ascensions for the most part. Saturday and Sunday, both weekends are going to be mass ascensions in the morning, okay? There will be glows in the evening, pretty much every day of the week, uh, some exceptions. The website has the specifics. On Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, those are competition mornings. Competitions are about the balloons going off field, going up, and trying to go onto field and throw beanbags at targets to win things like trucks. And they actually have a key grab. Uh, they, they will do a key grab and things like that, Okay. So that can be fun. And if you know where to go, that can be fun to see what they do because a lot of them will go into the same place to lift off 
so you can actually have some fun with a bunch of them all clustered together and they'll, they'll take turns and, and lift oh, off. I, I um, it's not as dramatic. Wednesday morning is the flight of the nation, which is what they call it's a mass ascension as well. Uh, and it's, that as well. it's pretty much like the weekend. Okay. So there. Thursday, Friday, special shape rodeo in the morning. So lots of stuff in that morning. And then also in the evening, you'll have the glody, what they call the glody for the special shapes. Oh, okay. And uh, last Sunday, nothing happens on the last Sunday. There's a massive Sunday. Nothing happens. Okay. Onward. Okay. Why am I telling you this stuff? No. So Where are you going? Ahead, but know that last Saturday in the evening, nothing happening. We okay with there, Ed? Yeah, we're just muting someone. That's cool. Okay. Balloon rides. You can get a balloon ride while you're there if you want to. Rainbow Riders is the only authorized balloon vendor at the Fiesta. Okay, so you have to contact them to arrange for a balloon ride. And that will be a basket with about 12 people in it. Okay, so jockeying for position around the rim, that's kind of tough. Having now, as an old man, done balloon rides a number of times, I cannot tell you there's anything on earth like it. It's the best thing ever, okay? Um, I, I, I can't believe I didn't do it when I was younger. <laughs> it's really stupid <laughs> while I lived there. Um, it's the best thing ever, but they're spending, okay? I, I won't give you a price because I don't know what the price is. I know they're not cheap, okay? Uh, crewing, they have volunteer booths for crews. If you want to go and crew, you can sign up and get assigned to somebody and actually participate, which is what I do when I go during the week when people have day jobs and they can't do it. But as a visitor, I have time. So I will go and I have the people I crew for and have been doing for uh, about eight years now. And it's lots and lots and lots of fun. And my guy, because you crew for him and you donate your time, will give you free rides. And so it's a, it's a great way sometimes if you've got the right person to get a ride. No guarantees. I'm just telling you what works for me. Okay. It's a great, great system for me. All right. Onward. Okay. No, no guarantees on any event. I already covered that as well. I'll reiterate. No guarantees on any event. Um, weather controls the event and recommended to stay at least a full weekend. Maybe more if you can. Okay. Uh, onward. <clears throat> okay. So were there, if, if you decide to stay for more than a couple of days, what else can you do? Things to do during the week where they're doing competition flying is you go take the tram up to the up to the peak. That requires reservations and planning because the lines get very long because there are a million people there with nothing else to do either. Okay, but that's a cool thing. The peak is another five thousand feet, so you're at ten thousand feet. Do a little hiking up there. Beautiful view, great for sunsets because you're up there and now you're looking at Albuquerque, which is basically a bowl of light and the sun setting behind them. So, and you, and if you get clouds, you get amazing colors. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, Santa Fe is an hour away. I don't know if you've been to Santa Fe, but Santa Fe is a lot of fun, completely different experience. Bandelier, two hours away. Uh, I got a plan. I think they have a shuttle now getting in and out of the park because of the, the road. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's not big. It's a single, it's a two lane road, but uh, Bandelier has Anasazi ruins and cave dwellings in it. Okay, so that's a cool place to go if you're into, into, into that kind of thing. We could do a photo walk in downtown Albuquerque. You go walk around downtown. Lots of cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, during the week, there are other events. I think there's a lowrider festival that goes on during the week, or at least on one weekend. If you're inter interested in cars, you can go check that out. I've seen them driving around. Uh, they, they Sometimes they're on the field, I think. So there's cool things there. Um, if you go and spend a couple of days, you might want to stop at White Sands on the way home. All right? Because White Sands is just about four hours south. And you go spend a couple of days down there, and White Sands is not to be not to be beaten. Uh, it's 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 like great it's like great sand dunes or Death Valley, but with white sand. So it's, it's a completely different thing. Uh, big big fan. En route, okay. Uh, distance travel things to think about. It's six hundred eighty five miles. It does, I do it in ten and a half to eleven hours. All right, in the car. That's just stopping. I'm I'm not one of these. I have to keep going, people. Um, I just drive too fast. Uh, but it's it's an easily easy one day drive, and I'm usually there in time for dinner. I get up, I get going, I get there in time for dinner. It's great. All right, carpooling. You want to spend some time with your friends. Uh, great thing to make travel go by is carpool with your other photographer friends, listen to podcasts, and talk about stuff, and boom, it's gone. And I've done that a few times too. On route. Okay, here's where we get down to it. Accommodations are very expensive. Hotel prices triple. All right. So what was 150 is now up to 500. 
Okay, it's ridiculous. Okay, I did some searching on Airbnbs. They are a very good option. Okay, the one I found that I really loved, which is a four bed, five, five, four bedroom, four bath, the four bedroom, four bath, came to a total everything five hundred bucks a night. So you split that up. That's one hundred twenty five per person per bedroom. One hundred twenty five per bedroom per night. Okay. Whether I can find another one or not is another, another story because that one's already gone. All right. There are Airbnbs available. There are rentals available. Okay. This is the critical point here, number three. It may be too late. All right. If, if, if you're interested and we don't get this taken care of, it's going to be too late for this year. So we're looking at 2024 now. All right. Yes, I'm going back in 2024. I already know. It's going to happen. Okay. Um, other thing. Uh, apparently, at this point in the calendar in Albuquerque, the full deposit is required in two days, and you get 50% back if you cancel before the event. There's none of this. You can cancel up to 28 hours or 48 hours beforehand. So if you're going to do it, you have to commit, right? So we have to put things in place. Um, so only 50% rebound. Onward. Okay. <clears throat> Action items. The question is, if you're interested, when would you like to be there? Are you willing to share? Do you want to take care of your own accommodations? Those are things to think about. I don't have a problem meeting up and being together if you want to find your own Airbnb with just a one bedroom. All right, that's cool. If you want to share and lower your costs, we could get together in a house and share accommodations, all right? And ideally find a house that has almost as many bathrooms as bedrooms so that things are pleasant, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, no one likes contention for the bathroom, you say. <laughs> At least I don't, okay? So, um, when do you want to be there? Do you want to be there the first weekend? Do you want to be there the second weekend? How many days? What what would you like to do based on the calendar and estimated cost based on what I've thrown out at you? Okay. I need an email. You can email me through the NAFFS website or I am at Gary at GaryOhook.com. I think it's relatively easy to remember. Okay. Um, let's see what I want to say here. Okay. I need your contact info, including your cell phone, okay? Just in case I have quick questions. And I, like I said, turnaround is critical here, all right? So if you're interested, I need to be able to get a hold of you. As well. And I, I will work hard to put this into place for people who want to go, okay? Like I said, we're out of time though. So this is going to happen within the next week and a half or two weeks. We got to get this nailed down if you want to go, all right? Um, but you also have to give me an amount, a maximum amount you're willing to spend with your budget, okay? So give me an idea of what this looks like. And based on what I get back in response, I'll lay it out in a spreadsheet and figure out what, what kind of accommodations we need. Me, I'm going to be there all nine days. No matter what happens, I'm going the entire time this year. All right, so I'm going to be there. If you guys want to be there on the weekends and I have the weekend to myself, we figure that out and go from there, okay? You yes. grew up there, so you may have another place to stay, or, or are you going to stay in the same place? I will figure that out. Okay. I may move in the middle of, if nobody wants to be there during the week, I'll probably find a one bedroom, and I have to find out if my wife's going to come out and join me the last half. Okay. Uh, so it's still up in the air. My friends who I usually stay with are, they have people in and busy and whatever, so that's not happening this year. So other than getting together with them to visit, I'm not going to be able to stay with them. So I have to find I have to find a place to stay. So uh, to make your planning a little easier, I will be there the, all nine days as well. Okay, so that's a two-bedroom. Okay, all right, cool. Send me an email. <laughs> what's you're, your, what's you're your name? Pass on that. <laughs> okay, so I will act as the coordinator to set this up for anyone who's interested. All right. I'm happy to answer. I am not going to be a guide, but I will help. I will help shepherd everybody into. We'll go do this. We'll go do that. I always say that, and I always end up being a guide. I may be surprised. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Okay. <laughs> Reality in my butt, right? Come, come, right? So, it's, so right. Albuquerque has a uh, uh, an airport. There's an Albuquerque. So, Alper, so, Alper, so, Alper, so yeah. some people will be flying into Albuquerque. Uh, so you could, and some people may be driving. Could be driving. Okay. So we have to figure that out. And, and if people want to just fly in and just need a, a ride, then we can figure that out. Yeah. That's that's what I need to know. Right. right. Those are the things I need to know. Okay. So the the takeaway here is think about schedule, price, um, 
send me an email with what you think again, as long as you can commit. Like I said, we need to nail this down. Um, I'm hoping we can find, a, I'm pretty sure we can find a place to stay. The price just goes up because the lower price places get snapped up. That's that's the biggest problem, okay? But, um, you know, how many? I don't know, we'll figure it out. It depends on who wants to go, <laughs> but that's where we're at, okay? I think that's the last one, right? I think we're, all yeah. done. we're all done, okay. So uh, that went a little longer than I had intended to. I apologize for that. Uh, any quick questions? Okay. All right. So, okay, there I am. It looks like I'm juggling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm done. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so we got presentation. Yeah. All right. We got William online. We got Karen here, and we're missing Jim. So. so as we're critiquing, if you all want to just critique somebody's photo, go for it, because we're missing one. Um, but hey, William, when we get to one of the photos you're going to actually talk on, just give us a shout out. Okie dokie. Because I can't really see you from here. And Karen, while you're here, just shout it out. So let's get this party started here on critiquing. Dennis looks like Max Headroom. <laughs> the video is all choppy. He, he, did. he was doing that last week, too, with everybody doing it. Thank you. You got to have sudden light or something really bad to have it done. I don't know. Well, that's happening. Well, Dennis's video is a bit shaky. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So here we go. Uh, beginner, intermediate, uh, beginner, oh, going too fast. All right. Okay, here we go. Beginner, we had six. <coughs> Something Pelicans, Maverick, and Lexia. Are you going to go through all six of them first? first and then we'll go to the critique. Uh, C one, two, three, four. The boat, red bell flower, suspension of belief, and six, two, five, nine, six, CAF. <laughs> we'll have to start scoring five. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll go back through, and if it's one of yours, shout out. It's not that I had. I wrote down. OK, that. that's mine. OK, yeah. what? Go for it. Pel mm -hmm. The pelicans. I think the pelicans are always interesting. And this group, aside from being a little out of focus, uh, seems to be more intent on preening than arranging themselves properly for an engaging shot. <laughs> That's my critique. Okay. Maverick That's and Lexia, my... okay. So I, I really like the joy and the surprise that are apparent um, in the photo. Um, if you look, I had to enlarge it a little bit but the focus is really on the baby's eyes. Um, and I think I would have liked it a little bit broader uh, than that. Um, <laughs> but I do think, you know, I, I just think the emotion that it brings, um, that it emits is quite nice. And I think I would have tried, if it were me, I would have straightened, looked to try and straighten the lines on the door a little bit in the cropping, just, you know, as long as the people didn't look off, but, and that's it. Okay. The boat and the trees. I think the boat one was mine as well. Okay. Um, yes. Yes. So um, I would have, or I, I, I like the subject matter of the photo, 
Um, I just think uh, that it's a little flat in it. It, I would have cropped it in a little bit from the left just to get the boat out of the center uh, a little bit. And I don't think it's an integral part of the photo to have that left side in there. And I might have used a, a little bit of a radial filter um, around the boat, uh, either a radial filter or um, a vignette around the boat just to highlight that a little bit more. But I do like the composition overall. Red bell flower paint experiment. That's me. Um, I think this would make an interesting print for printing on textiles like uh, shirts and perhaps aprons. Um, it's bold colors uh, from opposite sides of the color wheel harmonize nicely. I'm not sure if it really matters, but I think I might like it better rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Sharpness is not a factor in the scene viewed as a whole is the subject with no part actually stepping forward to claim the title in an afternoon well spent experimenting. That's it. Suspension of belief. Huh? I hope I didn't I hope I didn't mute. Did you hear me on the last one? I Yes. Yes. I just, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, that was, go back to the bridge. That, okay. That's mine. Um, <laughs> I like the subject matter of the photo, and um, uh, you know, there's certainly an air of mystery uh, about it, and and it's created by that foggy background. Um, and I also like the, the lighting from light to dark that takes you into the bridge. And um, the item at the right front, um, I probably would have taken that out. I think it's a little distracting. And right in the center at the very, at the horizon line, is a little spot, a dark spot, and I probably would have taken that out because you're not quite sure whether that's a water spot or dust or part of the picture. But otherwise, I really like the, uh, uh, the photo. The ocean and sky? Um, that I have, and... Um, I like the horizon line in the lower third of the photograph, um, but I'm assuming that the sky is the subject matter because it's not clear. And if that's so, I probably would have um, cropped up a little bit more on the water and really uh, put the water in the lower third and um, made it smaller. And uh, that's about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The winning image is Dennis. Yes. People's Choice Silver, Pelicans on the Water. Congratulations, Dennis. Second place, Judy Ogren, The Boat in the Trees. First place, Dennis, uh, Maverick, and Lexia. We'll go to the People's Choice. Two, People's Choice Silver, Dennis. Dennis is sweeping. <laughs> and gold, Dennis. All right, Dennis. 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to move Dennis up. Keep going. I don't know. He's from the beginning, I think. He's a sleeper. <laughs> yeah. So I think what we're gonna do here to save time is we'll just go straight to the critique on it. We'll go through all the images. Um, Karen, you just got to talk on three of them. Okay. Adam, your three, William, just shout it out when we get to one of yours, and then we'll uh, we'll take it from there. Change, change your style. Yeah. Um, All right, so we had 25 images. Iridescence. That would be me. Okay. This is called iridescence. And small birds are always difficult subjects. This one I think is a uh, copper rumped hummingbird and it's an attention getter. Technically excellent, sharply focused with just enough blur at the wingtips to show motion. I think it's a great shot. Paros Lighthouse. Well, it was me, but I choose to talk on a couple of other photos instead. Okay. Forgotten by time. Yeah, I like that too. Wildebeest Passage at Kilimanjaro. I got that one as well. Okay. In my opinion, it's a technically perfect, finely crafted, carefully cropped capture from what must have been a very memorable trip. I find myself, however, wanting to see more of the wildebeest, but that would come at the expense of not seeing Kilimanjaro. I find myself wanting to see more of Kilimanjaro by increasing the clarity or dehaze, but that would damage the perfect tones of the wildebeest. It's clear that the subject is the wildebeest, judging by their sharpness, but my eye wants to keep searching for anything else that might I, I might have missed, since the wildebeest are really a little too small to see clearly. I'm sure this image is a faithful recreation of the scene that the art, just as the artist saw it. As wall art, I think the image is fine, with perhaps a bit more contrast and clarity for the background. But as smaller art, as book-sized art, like for a travelogue or a textbook, I might suggest a square crop to include only the middle group of wildebeest. Cropping the uh, flamingos out at the bottom and just a bit of the cloud above Kilimanjaro, again with a little more clarity, a little more from the clarity slider. That's how I see it. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll talk on that. Tail to nose. Well, that was one of mine. And um, I think it's a really interesting photo. Um, and I like the balance of the symmetry. And the entire photo is in focus. Um, and if the clouds were softened in their focus just a little bit, um, I think I would think the plane is in the air. And this way I don't. Um, it makes me feel like the plane is on the ground and the person is stooping down to shoot to get the clouds as well. And I think the, the color on the back of the plane is um, a little too intense. I would have lightened it just a little bit because it's too close to the color of the sky, even if it's Depicting the reflection, I, I just think it's too strong, but 
I, I, you don't see this point of view from a plane too often. And so I, I like that as well. Bad day to be a bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm watching. Who are you looking at? Hunter. Great blue heron. We missed. I'm watching. Uh, you need to do. I'm watching. Please. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was trying to be dramatic. I said I'm watching, and you want to? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I read a little thing on it. I think this this photographer clearly has excellent post-processing skills to get the noise from an ISO 12,800 photo under control like this. The eye is focused spot on in what had to be a split second grab. Composition is compelling and the, and the texture of the owl is emphasized by the similar texture in the cracking bark on the left. The same is true for the two vertical stripes of color and the color in the owl's eye. Cracking good shot, I said when I wrote this. <laughs> I see nothing to criticize. I think it's a wonderful shot. Okay. Um, loops and shadows. It was mine, but I chose mine. No, that's my. That's oh, mine. Sorry. It's all right. If you got it, we can no, both. Go ahead. Both. <laughs> Loops and Shadows is, is, I believe, a, a strong composition of an abstract image. It's essentially a two-tone shot, which adds to the simplicity of the image. Uh, it could have been photographed from many angles, but I like the photographer's choice to make the dominant loop perfectly vertical. Uh, I might have been tempted, if it were my shot, to remove all the little imperfection imperfections created by the small bits of litter, such as at the triangle at the top left and the shiny object directly below where the object almost meets its shadow. Some particles on the sidewalk cracks are mildly distracting as well. All in all, it's a simple idea ex executed wonderfully. Tabby. That was mine, but I'm choosing not to talk on it. Morning flight. Marital mm. bliss. Me. Okay. Marital, a marital bliss is a remarkable shot from what must have been a remarkable trip. Composition, color, Focus all seem to be spot on. A low ISO kept the grain to a minimum. A relatively slow shutter speed worked to keep the ISO low. Stopping down about a stop on that 150 to 600 uh, helped ensure maximum performance of the lens while minimizing the depth of field, keeping the grass in the background from blending with the male lion's mane. If it was me in post, I would have dodged the mouth and the eyes of the male to show a bit more of the detail of the inner workings of this fierce creature. And I might have brightened the female's eyes a bit as well. Her teeth are perfect, giving a focal point to the whole image. It's an excellent image taken in a split second by a skilled photographer. Okay. I'll talk about moon shadows. 
So I really like this photo. Um, I find it very soothing. Um, the blue light adds to the sense of calmness in the photo. And I like how the moon is um, off center. And it seemed, however, there seemed to be some areas of white in the trees. Um, and to me, I, I find that a little distracting. I would have liked to have seen them blue. Uh, and I love the reflection. I think overall, this is a fabulous photo. And I also wonder if um, where this was taken. Uh, I just find that there's all kinds of details in it and find it fascinating. I can tell you. Choose wisely. <laughs> Frog. Frog. Me. Okay. A lot of work went into this unconventional portrait of this beautiful model. The makeup, of course, makes the picture. The costume is creatively crafted from all sorts of materials. The image itself is perfection with perfect focus, exposure, lighting, the right amount of bokeh and color balance. The slightly off-center composition feels right and the arms are perfect leading lines to the focal point of the image. That face, great shot. Lock long. Uh, that was mine, but again, I think I'd rather talk on another one. Okay. Flames in the garden. Rebuilding or is it building? It's a nice record shot of what has uh, was seen on this trip to Greece. I, I would have taken that shot too, if I was there. It just wouldn't have been my favorite shot from a trip that I would have selected for an open subject competition. I'm sure the photographer had little or no chance of working the scene as it was probably taken from a location the photographer had no control over, like from a car or a bus. I'm a little ill at ease with the negative space on the left just gradually blending into the scaffolding around the Parthenon temple. I might have cropped it a bit tighter on both sides to better showcase the subject. Perhaps too much care was taken as to not over, over, overexpose the image, but I find the image lacking in contrast and being a little too dark for my taste. Opening up a stop and perhaps adjusting the clarity might have given the eye a bit more to bite into, making the shot a bit more memorable. Okay. Release me. This was mine. I'll talk on it, but there's one more I'd still like to talk about. Um, I think the composition is really strong and it certainly tells a story. Um, and I like the blurred background. I think they did a really good job with that. Um, and I think it might have been just a little bit more dramatic to either lighten the hand and leave the, the butterfly dark or lighten the butterfly and leave the hand dark. Um, uh, and I might have lightened the henna lines on the hand. I find them a little distracting since you really, the, the leading line is to take you to the butterfly and the lines in the hand seem to stop it. Um, that's really my only, sort of negative criticism on it, but I think it's a well done photo. Firewater. Firewater is appropriately named. The best feature of this image is the fiery reds and oranges blending to white and then black. 
The blues give the eye a place to rest after such an intense journey. I see two centers of interest, the bright dome at the upper right and the perfectly centered dome in the lower center area. I'm not sure where to look. If it were up to me, I might have made the hard decision to exclude the upper bright dome to remove any doubt where the focal point is. At the same time, I believe I might have brightened the blue in that center dome and let the tree branch stay dark, providing a sharp point of interest. It's an interesting treat for the eye, but a bit confusing. The elephant's trunk. I gotta say something, this is a, a excellent deep space astro. I don't know how many shots went into this, but, or who did this, but. About 24 hours of exposure time in five minute exposure. Okay, wow. I figured as much. <laughs> Did you shoot this in New York? Yeah, it's my backyard and round the thing. This one is mine, the blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles. Um, so uh, this photo really just tells the whole story. Um, and, and I think it does it very well. And the story would change if the bird, if the water droplets coming out of the bird's mouth weren't there then the story wouldn't have been as dramatic at all. And I wouldn't have thought much about the photograph um, from a dramatic point of view. Um, and I think I like the, the blurry in the background. Um, and uh, I think I might have, I, I'm not sure whether I like the tree on the right in focus as it is, or I would have liked to seen it a little more blurred so that the birds really carry the focus um, because they're nice and sharp. And I love the soft colors on the birds. And, um, and I may have just cropped it in a little bit more on the right hand side and shown only a little bit of that tree. Old bridge over the river. Animus. Animus River. This is uh, Durango. Okay. Come visit the South Dakota Badlands. That's me. Okay. Um, it's very colorful. It has a great range of tones, but unfortunately, the post-processing has made this image unprintable as a landscape suitable for wall art. The JPEG image fell apart in the sky when extra contrast or clarity was added to make the image pop. I might have suggested a sky replacement or a Photoshop blend to recreate <laughs> similar tones to what is shown, eliminated the blockiness. Also shooting this landscape on an iPhone in RAW rather than JPEG or HEIF would have eliminated the, the blockiness problem. The scale of the image also confuses my eye. The curve in the lower left appears at first as a thick block wall quite a distance away in keeping with the mountains in the distance and the rounded hill at the right of the image. But on closer examination, when my eyes take a second look, the thick block wall reveals itself to be an asphalt curve at the edge of the parking lot. And the hill in the right might be able to hide behind a pickup truck. Taking a photo a few steps to the right might have made it possible to capture just the mountain and the hill without the parking lot and the curb causing my eye to pay attention to something other than the true subject of this majestic panorama. Another alternative would have been to crop the image just below the portion of the road or pathway below where the right and left sides form a Y and over as far as possible to the curb without showing it and cropping down from the top 
for a little less of the cloudless sky. All right, let's see what the judges say. Hmm? All right, seven images. Honorable mention, Dave DeVore, Marital Bliss. And she wasn't happy with him. They, they were sleeping, and he gets up to try and go to another girlfriend, and she busts him. So <laughs> they lay down again, and this repeated about five times. And this is about the fifth time she's really letting them know. <laughs> they're, they're not in But she thought that they were. <laughs> wow. I will mention Sabrina Lunsford, Hunter. Beautiful. Yeah. I will mention Sabrina Lunsford, Iridescence. Also beautiful. I will mention William Ling. Great blue heron. I like the colors in the sky. Yeah. Like Did he add the textures to that? No, but I replaced the sky. Oh. I don't see like an oriental plants. Mm -hmm. um, I got a friend with a lot more from texture than those way. Third place, Vance Strickland, Brock. Uh, uh, Fast. Second place, Travis Hanna. I'm watching. That's a great shot. <coughs> First place, William Ling, Moon Shadows. Where was this shot, William? That was shot at a place called Descanso <laughs> Gardens. It was my go to place when I lived in California to go shoot wildlife and, and so on. And, but in the wintertime, uh, everything's dead, and they figured out that uh, if they get this lighting company to come in and, and do a light show and walk people through there in the winter, they can pay the bills. It's very close to JPL. It's, it's in, a, in a place called La Cañada, Flint Ridge. And um, I was there, you know, around December with my iPhone 14. <laughs> and uh, that's just one of the shots. It was just a, a remarkable exhibition. All right. Now let's see what the people have to say. All right. What do the people say? Dave DeVore, People's Choice Silver, Wildebeest Passage. Two days on Mount Kilimanjaro was not clouded in, which is real unusual. Uh, People's Choice Silver, Vance Strickland. That was a mistake. They were tied. Mark went in there and fixed something. And People's Choice Gold, William Lang, Great Blue Heron. Thank you. The people and the judges agree. Yeah. All right. Now let's go over to <laughs> the advanced. see it uh, there we go. So I'm going to show it uh, <clears throat> which one judges selection 
Teaks, which one? Do we have 18? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what it said. Yeah. Hold on, let me double check. Before I proceed, yeah, we had 18. All right. This is going to actually show them all, but have the critiques. Um, this is our PSA judge that critiques these. This one was called Sand, Sand, Just More Damn Sand. <laughs> Or would you rather see him full screen first? I'm okay with that. You're okay? All right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Last glimpse of summer. Heidi Stober, yep. Yeah. This one was fish or fowl. Pool of tranquility. That's it's here in Austin right now. Hmm. Would you rather me read the uh, this one is Sunset at Cato Lakes, Texas. Yeah. 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 American Avocet. Avocet. There we go. Ooh. This one is ill advised move. <laughs> Last picture of the was ever in. Missing some comment or, or her grading on the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't all fit. Okay. I think people were more interested in the uh, no choice in the verbiage. <laughs> yeah. Made by hand. With the overall score. I don't know, we'll see at the end. This is right turn. Yeah. 
actor that you would call. Yeah, really. Don't get any higher. I mean, jump a little higher. You get a little lower. <laughs> Broken grain hauler. I still don't understand how somebody could open theme and get a 96 for relevance to the theme. <laughs> <laughs> We got a time for rebuttal. Got to find out one week's fun. Open things, no, yeah. I just worried about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. This one is on the hunt. And it's throwing, not throwing. But this one was relevant to the theme as compared to the other one. Because he's not in the open. Could be. <laughs> Water lily, mood, bliss. I would have thought this was out in the open too. Could be in the studio. You can put the other one in the yeah. studio. What do you suppose? That's uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just poor use of color. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's better on the TV than on the TV. Yeah. Uh, smoking it. Uh. Family reunion. Eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> Care Bear. <laughs> Hellas Lake Aurora. Guess this one wasn't out in the open either. Yeah. Only got a 95 for relevance to theme. I need to 
this control C control here is called a defense. Give uh, the PSA judges better instructions when it comes to the relevance to theme. Open is open. what they're going to do next month with getting the corner well, i'm going to be a little bit specific that you know well specific but more like we talked about I, I guess we'll talk about that after yeah. this the next competition and can nobody not, can leave until i get three volunteers for judges can we not have her again <clears throat> yeah i think i think there's another question i've got somebody there yeah what are you looking at? <laughs> All right, we'll see how. The judges' scores came out. Uh, all right, five images. Honorable bench and Bill Button. Eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> was he on a stick? Yeah, tell if he's on a stick or not. He could have been. Move on the hand. Okay. Honorable Bench and Bill Bunton on the hunt. There you go. He matched the same. I'm surprised you didn't go re edit it after what Josh said about it. <laughs> I still like mine better. <laughs> Third place, Gary Hook, family reunion. Second place, Louis Abulafia, sunset at Cato Lakes, Texas. I think Louis is online, so we can go there. Is he on? Does he want to talk? Okay. Yeah. No, so don't like to know. Say something. Uh, you're not going to believe it, but I had to desaturate the colors as it came from the camera. Uh, this was uh, last fall, and uh, it was just an incredible morning. Were you in a boat? Yes. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Small pontoon type boat. <laughs> well, you could have walked out there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I think the water was a little deeper in this area. And her comment about cropping on the left, um, I have some tighter images, but I wanted to do uh, uh, more of a panorama uh, for this particular view. And first pace, Louis Abulafia, sand, sand, just more sand. This was uh, shot in Morocco uh, this past September. And uh, one day we went out and uh, had uh, some glamping uh, in the desert, which was great until the uh, power went out and the tents that we were staying in became an oven very quickly. So this was taken on uh, the, uh, the we were there one evening and then one morning. And this was taken in the morning. Uh, where there are all kinds of caravans that were uh, out in the desert. Awesome. Yeah. Great image. Thank you. Well, let's see what the people have to say. Bronze, Gary Hook. Is this the same stand of trees? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, no, no, no. I, we were out wandering around. I have no idea where this was. Oh, okay. We were in a boat. We were in a boat. And there was we were in a boat. That fog. Okay. Which, which yeah. out the water. This was okay. with uh, the Z6 umbrella for this trip. It's, it's actually a shot down over there. It came off really neat. Yeah. 
Oh, I was going to town, man. No, it's so dreary that. Yeah, no, it was incredibly dreary. No, I went to town on this. Um, the whole series uh, from from Caddo because they they were all shot at five or six thousand eyes, so it was very very dark. Um, and it was very blue, and so wow. I definitely modified the white balance, and then there's texturing on here, and and all kinds of stuff uh, to to make something out of what I thought was going to be crap. And I'm real happy with what I got out of it. So yeah, you know, yeah. I would go back good. again in a moment. Sometimes we'll use the day make the light balance instead of hard shooting. <laughs> all right, Silver Lewis. Seems to be a popular place. When you're doing a workshop there, Dave. I don't want to be a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be one of the guys. And gold medal goes to Lewis. Hey. <laughs> Can I can I talk about the judge now? Yeah, yeah. It's Jerry, it's not about the judge. Yeah, I, I think she's wonderful. So, so really outstanding. What was that? I think the judge is wonderful. <laughs> no, he knows her stuff. It's very, it's very clear. You have very strong images. There's no doubt about that. And and I have no, I have, I have no complaint about um, the choice of the images. Yeah. Um, what I think what bothers me most in with Ms. Stover is it, almost without exception, most of her comments revolved around what she wanted to see in the image, not what was there. And this is the problem I have with judging. I was listening to a po I was listening to a podcast today about the national the Natural Landscape Photography Awards. It's a new competition. They just had their second year. And part of the discussion with with pro photographers came up talking about the judges. When they were going through the images, spent a lot of time talking about um, looking at the images and people commenting about the images not having what the judges wanted. It. And some of the other judges had to steer them away from that concept to talk about what's there, judge what's there. Were they successful in their image and what was presented to the judge, not what the judge expected to see? And and like I said, almost without exception, the comments were about, I wanted to see this. I wanted to see this. I like this. I didn't like that. So nobody cares what you wanted to see, lady. What we care about was, was the image successful? And Dennis is blinking over there. Yeah. <laughs> Max Hedrum again. I'm going to have an epileptic. No, he went, he's at a rave now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a mosh pit. Okay, guys. <laughs> so, 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 so the, the reason the reason I bring this up is is I, I I tend to harp on this. I know, but I think it's very important that, that when we are assessing an image, and it's not just the judges, but all of us. I think when we're assessing an image, we need to look at what we've been given. We need to we need to, to consider what we've been given, and it's not about whether we like the image or not. It's about trying to discern what the maker was trying to accomplish, and were they successful at that? And just because I think it's a little dark or it's a little light doesn't necessarily mean that that's wrong. It means I may not understand what the maker intended and whether they were successful. Mm -hmm. Were they successful for me? Maybe not. Were they successful for somebody else? Absolutely. You know, it doesn't really matter. But if I go, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that, that's that's not helpful. The maker is showing us what the maker made. And that's what's important. So we can't walk in and go, I need to impose my view of the world on this image. No, you don't. You need to look at the maker's view of the world. And you need to understand, try to understand what they're trying to impart to you. We don't do this when we walk up to a painting. Oh, Pollock, the grays are all wrong. No, we don't go to Picasso and go, well, your line stroke over. No, you should have made it go around here. We don't walk up to a painting and do that. We don't, we don't bitch about what other painters are doing, but we go to town on photographers. And I have a huge problem with that. I just think that's the wrong way to look at a photograph. Right. And, and, and I think I think she failed miserably in her job here, especially, <laughs> and here's the theme. <laughs> God, no. But also getting everything hundreds and nineties. 
Yeah, really. Yeah. Those were not all hundreds and nineties images. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, you can't tell me I had a poor use of colors, a poor use of color on my water lily. You can't tell me the edges were were, were soft because that's a focus stack of 47 minutes, 47 images. They're not soft. Okay. And then give me a 93. A 93 is just an outstanding image. Almost nothing is wrong with it. No, 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 no. If she had been properly judging my image based on her comments, it would have been maybe an 82, 84 at best. And I'm okay with that. I don't care, right? I don't care what she thinks because I have thick skin. The point is she didn't do her job, okay? Not No, dis, no disrespect for William at all because I voted for your images where they were, okay? Just so you know. Um, <laughs> and I, I, think, I think they were the strongest images. Yeah. That's okay. But these PSA judges are failures, in my opinion. Rant over. Turn the camera, damn it. You know, you're on the advanced, I think that, that kind of stuff might be, you know, understandable. I think when we're talking about the basic group, you want to encourage people with constructive criticism. And, you know, it would be better if the ocean wasn't draining out to the right there. You know, it should be level. You know, some some uh, some things like that where you can, uh, you know, be uh, uh, encouraging rather than uh, just tearing things apart. That that looked like almost everything was wrong there, like you were saying, Gary. Everything she perceived as wrong. Yeah, and you know, uh, like I said, almost to an image. It's like better, you know. Hey, nice try, but if you've done this, maybe yeah. You know, there, there, there's another way to phrase it where you still get the point across. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, if you if you went back to the basic images and the, the portrait of the of, of the ocean, okay. Karen Karen talked about how um, I believe that when you said less less um less ocean, ocean less ocean, okay. yeah. And and taking uh, have y'all seen the Fablemans yet? By the way, okay, you need to see the Fablemans. You, you need to see the Fablemans just for the John Hurt scene. I'm sorry, um, but I, I looked at that as like I thought I thought it was very very interesting, and I liked where the the maker put the horizon. Um, there were things that could have been done to add life to the sky, and you could have vignetted the bottom and drawn. Uh, to, to, to distract from the bottom, maybe in a different way, you could have cropped more. There are definitely things, and so technical, technically we can talk about this. Do, do we know what the maker intended? If the maker's not here to tell us about it, no. But I kind of like the image, I, as it was. it was. It worked for me, you know? But that's not the point. The point is, was the maker successful? And I'll go with, yeah, for me. But okay. when you to counter that, yes, please, please, absolutely, let's have a discussion. Um, it it also depends on our experiences as well. That's true. And um, not to to necessarily take that one photo into account, but you know, you but in the intermediate, we had to I photo yeah. in order, and if we use the the numbering system. That that were given to indicate, you know, like anything below an eighty is is really a, a much more poor picture. And I didn't think that any of the photos were really poor quality. But it, the numbers, you know, I had to go through and figure out that number system before I could go back kind of and then reevaluate and change as I went along but to give me an overview and I think it was too overwhelming there were too many photos to narrow it down mm -hmm. um and I think there were a few of the intermediate photographers that really need to go into the advanced yeah. level yeah. to get them out of get, yeah. get promoted yeah. um, yes. because their, their, their photos were outstanding even if there were little things wrong mm -hmm. that didn't really mm -hmm. take away from the overall photo. Um, but there was, you know, uh, there were other photos that the subject of the subject matter of the photo was fabulous, but the background really left something to be desired. Okay. So, but I know that photographer is a fabulous photographer. 
And that one photo, if I had to to judge it, which I did, um, you know, that's where I would have taken the points on. Okay. Um, but did she achieve what she wanted? Probably, because I know how hard it is to get birds. I'm almost, you know, I really struggle with it. So I appreciate the beauty of it. But I think too, that when we can give a suggestion or show that this was a distraction, I don't think that that's such a negative. And sometimes we don't see those. You're, in our you're going where I, I wanted to go. We with don't this always see those in our This is not group. just about judging. This isn't a national competition where the score and the order is absolutely everything. Right. This is to bring everybody up, to right. raise all the votes. And you've got to have negative feedback. You've got to identify what needs to be improved. It's the one that struck me was the curb in the mountain yeah. scene. Yeah. You know, get out of your car and walk a few feet. And that was appropriate commentary. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Or even if they had my, I know my other comment, I would have just taken that left crop over and taken it out. And it still would have been an, a very extremely it, uh, it dynamic photo without, without, without the curb. That. Yes. Which, but, which one are you talking about? The Badlands. Badlands. Well, okay, so I did crop out the left side as much as I right. could to still keep the integrity of the view. It's it's a turnout. You know, you always, you drive through mm -hmm. Badlands, you turn out, you can stop, and you can take your pictures. Now, could I have gotten more to the right? At this point, I cannot tell you anymore. But I know, you know, well, I, I did what I could. That, that's the other thing from my perspective is we're looking at some of these pictures and we know that you're not going to get that owl a second time. So you take what you can get, yeah. you know, and there's not, you can do about so much pro pro post processing, but you can't always get some of the other things corrected or changed. Yeah, but the whole thing is, you know, what I think what you heard was, okay, next time look for the opportunity to move and get things out of the yeah. So that's, I think the thing that we want everybody to come away with is how to enhance their personal level. So you're taking a step up every time you go out to shoot. You think about what's in your foreground. You think about what's in your background before you release the shutter, or at least you release it enough times you get different options. Yes. And that's what we want to do with this group. We want everybody to be able to improve their photographs and skills. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's kind of hard to hear, but I'll never forget. I thought I had the perfect shot and I had a distracting yellow leaf in the corner. And I had to hear about that. I've never done it again. I do what Rick Salmon and Stephen called Border Patrol. Yeah. Every, every picture now. And, you know, Was I the one that told you about the yellow leaf? <laughs> I it for a while <laughs> just like the bird poop all over the lot yeah i mean you know but you, you know you just got to kind of toughen it up a little bit and realize it's for your own good so our teaching moments you know so there is constructive criticism i'm thankful for them and it's taking oh, yeah. to another level well and 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 again we can we can talk about technical elements right and we can talk about board control. I, I call them focus and things are focusing yeah exactly I do I, um I, I I it's I mean I'll go back I'm gonna go back to Mr. Stoker's comments and, and kind of re-review re, re them uh because I, I wanna I wanna yeah. make sure that maybe I just didn't misinterpret yeah. them. But I, I really felt like her <laughs> this is something what what she wanted to see. Yeah. And and, and that to me is not the right perspective. I, 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 I mean, and, and I've tried over the last couple of years doing this to 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 improve the way I go about it. And it's about I I go now and I look at the images. I don't even break them. I just look at the images. Spend a few minutes. I walk away for a couple of days and let them percolate in my head. And then I go back and I look at the images again and go, okay, now I'm going to rearrange them. Yeah. And then I walk away. That's what I do. Then I go back and I rearrange them again, and then they start coming down. If, if I'm judging, okay. So that I, I have time to really ponder. Like, well, I didn't really appreciate that one the first time. 
So now, now I'm now I thought about I I, I see where maybe he he, he she he she they were going <laughs> um, with the image. No. Okay, let's put it over here. It's it's actually stronger than I thought it was because I, I didn't spend much time. I don't, you don't want to do an Instagram thing, right? We're not we're not swiping, right? Um, so you know, what, what, what I hear you say about the, the yeah. different components <clears throat> with a lower than a hundred, but overall score being a hundred. Yeah, I saw I, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's not going to be a hundred. There's right. no way. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. So, you just threw the numbers out I, there. And, uh, yeah. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. So, <laughs> so, what I'm hearing Gary say and what the kind of the way I've uh, rated these is I go through and I put them in the order that I believe is the ranked order of where they are. Mm -hmm. And then I look at them technically and what can be improved. So, the ordering is about the quality and how the image affects you and impact, yep. which should include the title. And then the feedback is more about how well you did to achieve what you achieved. And in particular, to point out the things that will help us improve. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I accept. Yeah. So, Next month's theme is get in the corner. Oh, right. Okay. Back to the exposure triangle and the way I interpreted it and sent out an email, I think a lot agreed. Just pick a corner. All right. Some people were over engineering it. Uh, the engineers. <laughs> yeah, uh, what, what don't you understand here? <laughs> <laughs> that was a pipe dream back in high school. Not, not helping. <laughs> <laughs> then I learned to blow up people. Um, just like we, we went the exposure triangle. You have you know, your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. So as long as your EXIF data is there for the next group of judges to know, like if I take a picture of a jet plane at one four thousandth of a second, I picked a corner. Or I went out and took an astro shot and did it at one or at 20, 20 seconds or 25 seconds or 15 seconds, I picked a corner. Or I shot something at a million ISO, I picked a corner. Or extreme aperture, or extreme aperture whether wide open or really closed down. Is that the official definition of what that theme is? Because in the there absence is, of that, there is I, would, it, would, I would have assumed that it was like a corner of a wall. So if no. I submit a picture, did you of, read the rest of the description? No, that's what I'm saying. It goes to, it goes to what we, <laughs> this was back to his last <laughs> two weeks, or whatever it was, the last meeting where we, talked about the exposure triangles. So just pick a corner, so, any so corner, we, and... So it is described in the, yeah. the, the themes list. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but that's that corner includes both, uh, for instance, the aperture and the shutter speed, right? Take something to the yeah. extreme. So take Depending something to the extreme. Yeah, go to an yeah. extreme. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, high right. clarif yeah. for clarification. That camera. Can actually go to an extreme. Well, yeah, camera, it, yeah. yeah, the your your EXIF data is going to show what your ISO was, what your shutter speed was, what your aperture was. It might even tell you. It'll tell you how you know what you were at six hundred millimeter, two millimeters, whatever. It's going to give you all that information. Right. So some cameras can do more than other cameras. Well, yeah, but it'll be harsh and expect everybody to get that. F one four for the aperture. Yeah. If all you got is an F four lens and you're sitting there at F four and high ISO and a low shutter speed, you're in a corner. Yeah. You're in all corners. Can I ask a question? Oh, well, I'm Hello, can I ask a question? So 
it's really there are really six corners, right? There's high ISO or low ISO, high um, shutter speed, really low shutter speed, and uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Average. <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah the f stop. I have a couple. I have a lens that I'm probably going to do with macro, and it doesn't. It, it's totally uncoupled from my uh, meter, so it won't show the. Uh, I have to shoot at f20 or f40. So you just have to take my word for it. What do you do? Just put it in the title. <laughs> Add it to the title. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the way and after discussing this and 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 hearing about what we're doing, the way I've interpreted the theme in the corner is there's three elements, right? You have the three elements. Pick one and figure out where that goes to one extreme or the other. Yeah. Let everything else work. I, I want to do an F40 shot. So whatever happens to the rest of that, I don't care. But the focus here, the, the emphasis is on an F40 exposure. Yes. You know, for, for William's example, um, you know, something like that. At least that, that is that kind of in line with yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So that, okay. I just put the yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's open. I mean, February twenty. February twenty. Yeah. I think so I'd have to go back and look. But, that, that'd um, be Tuesday. That's already yeah. Tuesday. And if anybody wants to volunteer, email me. If not, you're all going to get an email blast. Were you talking about the deadline? For the, for the 14, 14. That's right. That's not fair. Next week. So we got to get busy. Yeah. Yeah, you got five days. Oh, good. I got another week. I thought Valentine's Day was this. I thought it was this weekend. Next week. Next Tuesday. I better look at my calendar. But anyway. Huh? <laughs> so, anyway, anybody else got any, anybody out there in Zoom land have any questions? Nope. Feel free to call me or email me if you have questions about the yes the requirements for the image. Uh, for this competition. And next week we meet again. Yeah. Next next week we on pet photography. Right, we have a guest speaker zooming in from Albuquerque, uh, pet photography. And then in March we have the photo editor of Texas Wildlife Magazine. And okay. she will be talking about uh, what a photo editor looks for. Texas uh, Wildlife or Parks and Wildlife? Parks and Wildlife. Yeah, I mean, I'm on her list of people yeah. that can contribute. Yeah. Is she going to be live or is she going to be I've live? asked her to be live. Okay. Yeah. So next week's, so I guess we could just do all Zoom. Right. If she's Zooming in, then there's no sense. Right. Okay. All right. So no physical meeting next Thursday. We'll do it virtually. Here, here. Any other questions, concerns? What did you use for your picture? What do you mean? Was it a regular was it camera? camera? Yeah, yeah. The the one deep astro. I think that, that was yours. Was a red cat. So red cat. Red cat okay. Uh, fifty one. So two hundred fifty millimeter focal okay. range. And um, I that was a mon dedicated mono astro camera. Um, no, I, I still shoot with SLRs and regular lenses sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I've looked at that. That's, that's I, was that's like, I didn't really want to go down that path. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I, yeah, that's, that's a little far, far more. Yeah, my wife would be like, what rabbit yeah. hole are you going down now? <laughs> you need to pay for a new roof, <laughs> not a new camera. <laughs> 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 the camera's always more important. Yeah, that yeah. rabbit hole is right beside the bird photography rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, huh? thank you, everyone. Y'all have a good week, weekend, and we'll see you all on Zoom next week. Thank you, bye. Bye, guys.